Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news and transfer news this Friday the 14th of August. Uh, it's Europa League weekend as you will know and it's a very exciting time for Manchester United because we've got a Europa League semi-final coming up. Now Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is doing his press conference tomorrow evening in case people thought it was going to be this morning like I did. Lots to discuss. I want to talk about Van der Beek today because Van der Beek has actually spoken. Uh, Jaden Sancho hasn't spoken. Van der, Beek, Van der Beek has spoken about his transfer future and many of us would like him to be coming to Manchester United. So I do want to talk about that a lot as well as a few other things like what Flex was talking about, my opinion about Pereira leaving, a little, about, a little bit about a potential swap with the Barla now that Pop Perlo's there. But look, I'm not going to avoid the elephant in the room. There is a tweet that's gone out this morning from Jan Argafjortov to say that clear message from Dortmund. There's no chance that Sancho will leave. It is set in stone. Well, look, I can't keep telling you time and time again. I'm confident Manchester United will get this deal done. If you're confident, you're with me. If you're not confident, you're where you are. There's nothing I can say to make you more confident uh, there's nothing you can say to make me less confident. I mean, look, Jan Argafjortov was tweeting stuff out last week about it's very likely it's going to happen, that it will happen. What's changed in a week? Only yesterday Fabrizio Romano was saying that talks continue. What's changed in a week? The only thing I can think that's changed in a week is that Manchester United Football Club have decided they don't want to spend the money. But as I said last night... Why would you walk into a deal where you knew it was 120 million euro and then think that you could get it any less? I mean, this would be the biggest L of our transfer history if we walk into negotiations knowing how much a player was and get and walk out of it thinking we could have got him for cheaper when Dortmund have an amazing record of getting high value for their players. We would be looking like total prats. Now, let's be honest, there is every realistically chance that we could walk out of this deal looking like a bunch of prats. But I don't think that United would want to do that again because there is no escape. You are a big prat if you mess this deal up, Manchester United. And I don't think they will want to do that. But there was a funny tweet I saw today, and I must give him a shout out, at TF Writer. said, August the 15th, Jadon Sancho commits his future to Dortmund. August the, 20, uh, August the 20th, United refused to meet Usman Dembele's valuation. August the 30th, buy and rule out an exit for Kingsley Coman. September the 2nd, Adama Traore signs a new deal at Wolves. September the 10th, United announced new improved contract for Dan James. Well, we've lived these joke banter things before. And this, you know, as funny as that is, and it is funny, and some, some people will say it's funny because it's true. The reality is this is United. And it's not just United over the last six years. If you're old enough, it's United ever since the Glazers came in. We used to get this with Sir Alex. There's no value in the market. So look, Sir Alex Ferguson's the greatest sports manager there's ever been, but he was a club man and he backed the Glazers. He stood by it and I think he did it because he's a club man and he didn't want United to be an embarrassment and he would fight for Manchester United no matter what. And I'm sure deep down Sir Alex Ferguson knew that the owners were not good, good for the club, but he would still come out with there's no value in the market and we'd still get embarrassed with the you know Schneiders and, and other deals. So look, this has been going on for a very long time. I feel think something's changed at the club, but if we're going to really if we're going to relive the pantomime again, would I be surprised? I'd be mortified, I'd be disgusted, I'd be fed up, but it wouldn't be a major shock if this all fell apart. I just don't think it will. I'm confident they'll get the deal done, but it wouldn't shock me if they did fall it apart, but I think we all need to be very clear. If this deal falls apart, it's nothing to do with Dortmund wanting an unreasonable amount of money. It's nothing to do with Jadon Sancho wanting Alexi Sanchez type wages. It's everything to do with Manchester United thinking that they are Billy Big Bollocks and they can get a bit a, a cheap deal for a player that's got three years on his contract and one, is one of the best in the world. You walk into the contract, you know. You walk into negotiations, you know the fee, you pay the fee, you get the player. That's what big clubs do. And I, I guarantee you Chelsea wouldn't mess this up. So Real Madrid wouldn't mess it up. Barcelona wouldn't mess it up. They'll go and get the player that they want for the manager for the club. That's what United need to do. Are you a business or are you a football club? And that's what it comes down to to me. So people can come out and say the deal's over, it's done, it's not going to happen. Until Jadon Sancho comes out and commits his future to Dortmund. And if he does that, that will be a disgrace on the part of Manchester United Football Club. Because this is a player that wants to come to our club that has agreed terms according to good sources, if he comes out and says, I'm staying at Dortmund, what a cock-up that would be on the part of United. And they can't afford the fact to happen. So let's wait and see. United transfer window has been shocking, says Gaz Hardy. No, their time left to do signings, but I only see it as time wasted. 
Um, when you consider Dortmund, Dembele went for nearly 145 million. What Dortmund want for Sancho is actually cheap. You know, I've just been ridiculous with their valuations, says Mike Thomas. And Lee McGoffrin says, the only people who truly know what's happening are the clubs. All these journalists are just trying to be first. You should stop trying to milk this saga. It's getting embarrassed. Lee, um, thanks for the super chat, but we are a fan channel and we've been a ch fan channel for five years. If you don't like it, don't watch it. We don't pretend to be journalists. We don't pretend to be ex-players. We're a fan channel where fans get to have their opinion, just like you have there. So I applaud it. That's your opinion. But don't tell us how to run a fan channel because fan channels do not have to go live with credible information. Sometimes we will, sometimes we won't. But a lot of the time we're reacting to the news. We're not going to sit there and just not react to things because that's not what a fan, ch fan channel is meant to be about. If you don't get it and you don't like it, don't watch it. No one's asking you to. It's a free world. But we will go live and discuss stuff because that's what fans are doing all over social media, all over, in the pubs and the uh, and, and workplace today. They'll be talking about Sancho. So I don't want to talk about it much more than that anyway. Sancho should be questioning United's desire for him, says Austin Shaw. Well, that that will be questioned if he doesn't come. Uh, so I so ironic, says Roloff, saving money by pissing off the people that make you money. Business sense equals buy best product, Sancho for your consumers, the fans. Well, they've been failing at that for a long time. Zork destroys Woodward at transfer games. Would you hire Zork to be in charge of Manchester United's transfer business? Mate, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd employ you. You know, I don't think... What people forget, and I want to talk about Van Der Beek, but what people forget is, if, if, and I don't think this will happen, look, for all my frustration at Manchester United there, it's a hypothetical frustration because I think they're going to deliver. I'm confident they're going to deliver. I think over the last six months, they've been good. And I think they'll continue to be good and they'll come out of this looking good. But if they don't, they need to be aware they're going to look like a bunch of prats. But I think they'll come out of it looking good. But look, if, if, if Sancho comes out and says he's staying at Dortmund and he does stay at Dortmund, that's a huge, that, I mean, that's the biggest blow we've ever had. Griezmann was frustrating, but that was understandable because Dort Atletico Madrid got a transfer ban and morally he decided to stay. This would just be a huge embarrassment for the club if they don't get him and he walks away. But on top of that, Haaland, we wanted him. We didn't get him. Dortmund did. Bellingham, we showed him round Carrington with Oli and Sir Alex. Dortmund got him. Sancho, we want him. We desperately want him. Dortmund keep him. That would be three in six months where Dortmund have absolutely mugged us off. And people say, well, surely Solskjaer will be furious. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is a disciple of Sir Alex Ferguson. He's a club man. He would have been really frustrated he didn't get Erling Haaland because he nurtured Erling Haaland back at Mulder. He's got a great relationship with him. He would have really thought he was going to get him. And we didn't get him because we messed up the deal. He would have thought he was going to get Jude Bellingham because we showed him round Carrington with Sir Alex Ferguson and I believe Cantona was there as well. We didn't get him. He would have thought he's going to get Jaden Sancho because he's a young English player who wants to come to Manchester United. He's got good relationships with people like Rashford and Lingard. Are we going to get him? Now, some people would say, would Solskjaer come out and have a big old moan about that? Mourinho definitely would. But Solskjaer won't because Sir Alex Ferguson wouldn't have. They're club men. They don't like it that Manchester, even though it's not their fault, even though it's they'll know it who is a, who's to blame, they won't come out and do it because they know it's disruptive and they want Manchester United, they, they're protective of the club. You've got to admire that. But ultimately, if we do fail, they're only protecting the people who own the club, who who many people think are not, are not the right people. And, and they're on trial. They're on trial. The Glazers are on trial this summer. They've spent good money on wages for a big player in the NFL for their team over there. They've got to go and do it in, for their football club. Um, and we make a hell of a lot more money for them. Can I honestly see us getting bail, says David Purse. Oh, God, I'd cry. if we. You know what? That I'd never even considered that. But if we went and got Gareth Bale, I would cry. I mean, what would that be all about? An over-30 past-it golf player who's not really interested in football anymore is better than San... I couldn't even, I couldn't even be bothered. I couldn't even be bothered to try and spin that for them. So please, no. Uh, Mark, I'm sick of Woodward & Co. with their nitpicky transfer policy. 120 million is fair. How can they not back Ali after the turnaround he's caused, says Clay. And I personally think United seem to think that they hold the power they once did. The United name is no longer feared in the transfer window. Just pay the price, says Gaz. Look, you know, look. When it comes to transfers, Manchester United used to be a big player because of the name. We're not a big player anymore. Everton have got more money than us to spend. And they've never been a big name in world, in world football. But the transfer market changed many years ago. And, it, and this, is, this is why you need a director of football. 
The name Manchester United is probably important to the player you want to bring, but it's not important to the club who's selling to you. Because club football has changed so much. So many clubs have got so much money now. You can't turn up to Dortmund and say, hey, well, hello Dortmund, give us your best player for 80 million. No, they'll go sod off. We've dealt with Barcelona, we've dealt with uh, very big clubs, we want what we want, and I don't care whether you're Manchester United or Stockport County. If you've got the money, you pay it. If you haven't, get out. I think you uh, you should do a Ric Flair scream if we sign uh, Sancho to sub. I'm ready, I'm ready. Anyway, let me talk about Van der Beek, because look, Van der Beek has actually been speaking, and this is quite interesting for many of us who, you know, we've got to talk about the Sancho stuff because it's there, but realistically, I didn't want it to be the, the focal point of the show. I want it to be about Van der Beek because in Donny Van der Beek, you've got a per, you've got a player who is going to be going for about £40 million. Pounds. He's in his early 20s. He's one of Europe's best young midfielders and he's absolutely available, absolutely available. And for some reason... Manchester United, again, are not utilising their European scouts and are focusing on expensive British talent. Now, we know Sancho, and I've got no problem with that, but Jack Grealish, Van der Beek, I like Jack Grealish. I think he'd be a good player at Manchester United, but so much of me sways to more, to, more towards Donny van der Beek because I think Donny van der Beek is potentially the better player. He's a better price. He can play more positions. He's younger. And I think, you know... It ticks every single box for Manchester United because he's ready to take that step up. Um, and look, he's been speaking to the press, uh, I think it was yesterday, and, and basically what he says is, I don't know what my future is. In a COVID-19 free world, I probably was leaving this summer, but now I don't know. Um, I'm still here at Ajax. Uh, I, I, want, uh, I won't complain. Um, and let's see what happens. And, you know, maybe he's thinking that he's going to be at Ajax next season because their season starts again very, very soon. But when he talks about a COVID-19 free world and a move, he's not talking about Manchester United. He's talking about Real Madrid. Donny van der Beek was always going to Real Madrid. And that shows you the quality of the player. That if Real Madrid wants him, it's not like... It's, I mean, look, I think people are a little bit arrogant about Donny van der Beek in the sense that they think that maybe... Or maybe we shouldn't take him because he's from the Dutch league. And, you know, maybe Southampton want him. So why do we want him? Real Madrid want this player. And he's, he's a, got, available at a good price... He's a quality player. He's got lots more growth in him. I don't know why we're not all over this deal. But that statement from Donny van der Beek really echoes what I said all those weeks ago. Remember the weekend when it came out that United were in for Donny van der Beek? And I said, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I think what that is, is Man United wanting a positive PR spin story for clicks, having a good relationship with Edwin van der Sar at Ajax, and, an, and some sort of... Let's put it out there that United want him because we'll get a load of positivity because a lot of United fans will want him and it might kickstart Real Madrid to put the bid in to get rid of the player that Ajax wants to get rid of because Ajax want Donny van der Beek to go. They were expecting him to go. The money coming in helps the club. Look, Ajax are a selling club. They're, exact, they're, 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 not, as, they're not as high profile as Dortmund because Dortmund get more money but Ajax have done it for years. They, they Normally through their own youth setup to be fair. So they'll be ready to let Van der Beek go. They're not a club that thinks let's keep Van der Beek here forever. Ajax, you know, I remember the Ajax side that won the Champions League with like Kluver and Seedorf and Lippmann and all those players. You know, uh, was it Reisiger at right back and D Edgar Davids and, and Van der Sar? All of them left to go on to different things. That's what Ajax do. So Van der Beek is available. He's basically come out and put himself in the shop window with those comments, but 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 respectable to Ajax. If I stay, I won't complain. Let's see what happens. But what he's basically saying is that there is no offer in for Van der Beek. And if COVID-19 hadn't happened, he would have gone to Real Madrid. As we know, Real Madrid's financial situation is devastated by COVID-19. They wanted Pogba. They can't do that. Doesn't look like they can do Van der Beek. Maybe they'll find the 40 million to do it. But I don't believe United are in for Van der Beek. And I think that they should. Uh, I think they really should be, to be honest. Um, Barry Haynes says, Atletico who came and threw 100 million for Felix's release clause. You think PSG ever think they overpaid for Mbappe? Sancho is a mercurial talent. Just pay the fee and get it over the line. He's 20. I think Barry's actually spot on there. I mean, just to go back to Sancho for a minute. Manchester United are trying to negotiate a deal down for what Barry says is a mercurial talent. But exactly, you're exactly spot on. We should be we should be absolutely excited that no other club can get into this transfer race. The opportunity United have got here to get a generational talent in Jadon Sancho is a clear path. They've only got Dortmund. There is no Real Madrid. There is no Barcelona. On any normal summer, there would be three or four top clubs competing. 
but they're not. We've got a clear path and we still won't pay what he's worth. And this is what I mean. We need a director of football. I don't think United are very good at transfers when they've got to compete. We have no competition for Maguire. We have no competition for wan -Bissaka. We have no competition for Bruno. And we've got no competition for Sancho. And yet every deal took weeks. But when we've got competition, we fail. Bellingham, Erling Haaland. You know, we, are, we should be over the moon happy that we are able to get a very, very good player for a very reasonable but expensive price with no competition. And yet still we're like, oh, I don't know about that. But let's see. Every time United have made the Champions League since Sir Alex retired, the club hasn't backed the manager for the next season. I'm afraid of the same cycle. Hope I'm wrong, says Ian Booster. That's a cracking point. That is a very, 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 very good point. If you look at it, he's right. And I'd, I'd not thought about it with Oli, but I definitely remember it with Mourinho. It was the season he got sacked, wasn't it? We qualified for the Champions League because we came second, didn't get backed. He got backed a lot when we were in the Europa League, and so did Van Hal. But when he was in the Champions League, he didn't get backed as much. And it is, a, it is a worrying theme that I was hoping they were going to break. And I still think they will. Mark, I've got a feeling we will feel further behind Liverpool next season. They are adding to their squad with Thiago, Samaskis and Saar. We're standing still and should start looking at other areas. Look, Liverpool, if they get those three players and they are going to get Thiago and they have bought a left back in. And if they get Saar, I don't, I, don't, I don't think Sancho on his own is enough to compete with that. Because they're adding to a team that's very good with three good players that go on their bench probably. And their bench is, becomes even stronger. So... Yeah, we need more than Sancho and we haven't even got the first deal done yet. I don't see United being in for Grealish or Dembele if they don't want to pay 108 million for Sancho. Why on earth would they pay 80 million for Grealish or 100 plus for the guy that keeps the medical wing running, says Gaz Hardy. We won't, yeah, you're right. We will not be in for Usman Dembele and, uh, you know, never in a million years. As Sport reported yesterday and I said that, you know, Dortmund and uh, um, Barcelona want 90 million euro for Usman Dembele. Nobody will, will ever play that. But Van der Beek has spoken and, and to me... We're not in for Van der Beek. I don't know why. Um, look, you've got to back what the manager wants. And if he wants Grealish and he doesn't want Van der Beek, that's his choice. But, you know, in a, at a club where they don't want to spend money, again, you've got to clear... I mean, look, this is the summer. If we can't do deals this summer, we can never do deals. Because Van der Beek, again, would be another player that's probably got four or five options without COVID-19. He's got no options now. United could just go in and get that deal done for 40 million and get a player like Van der Beek with no competition at all. And yet, we're not going to do it. And yet, we probably would do it next summer when everyone else wants him and we won't get him. So, this summer was always an opportunity. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer actually hinted at this back in March that, you know, there are opportunities there to be done um, to take advantage of this window. Let's, let's see if that actually happens. I'm sure many of you think that it probably won't. Um, Clay says, Mark, do you believe United have begun distancing, distancing themselves from the Sancho deal? Well, it's interesting. We're hoping to have, uh, I think Flex is going to have a chat with James Cooper today, who's the Sky Sports uh, correspondent. And it'll be very interesting to actually, you know, because we've done Romano and we've had Falk and we've spoken to Fjortoft and obviously they're always tweeting about it. I think, I think when it comes to Manchester United, because they're quite good at briefing or, you know, they, they have good good relationships with some British journalists and they have a good, great, very good relationship with James Cooper. It'll be interesting to see what James says when he comes on at lunchtime. In relation to where, because I mean, that's the question we're going to ask. Where are United with this Sancho deal at the moment? Will James come out and say, "Look, I don't think it's going to happen." That would that would be a hammer blow. Or will he come out and say, "Look, United are still confident, but it's going to be a long process, and we'll have to wait and see." Which is what I think will be happening. The only way we get Sancho is if we win the Europa League. I'm pretty sure. Says Killer Clue, and uh, well, it, it puts more money in the pockets of the club. And typical United stuck in the past, slow transfers and no direct football. The ownership is happy to take money from the club and see us finishing top six as CRCL 20. Well, look, as I said at the start, it is, uh, all depends on what the ambition of the football club is, isn't it? Are they a club? Are they a football club or are they a business? Too many times we, we know we're a business. Both can run hand in hand. Many of you said this before. If they want to be a successful business, sometimes you've got to speculate to accumulate and, uh, you know, that's the principles of business many times please smash a like on the video if you are watching uh, subscribe if you're new bottom right hand corner a few more things to get through hey mark hope you're going well hope we're not in for dembele over sancho it would be like going for a ferrari dealership uh, um but driving in a Pri prius says alex rafina um interesting story coming out um about um from italy tuto sport a pogba swap deal for dabala now we can all have a good old laugh if we felt like having a laugh but actually you know what I wouldn't be surprised if the, if the deal was put there to United. I'd be surprised if Manchester United even bit at it. 
Um, but I suppose most of this, the only thing that got me thinking about this is, and I don't think it's going to happen. I, I just don't think, I mean, imagine that. We don't get Sancho and then we swap uh, Pogba for Perlo. Uh, sorry, not Perlo. Um, probably would. Um, can you play in the midfield and hold it with Matic? Uh, can you swap uh, swap Pogba for Dybala? Now, it won't happen. It won't happen. But what what the interesting thing is, and it all again, everything leads back to what United are going to do this summer, really. Imagine United don't get Sancho and they go to Pogba and say, right, Pogba, we've got some money. We want you to sign a new contract. And Paul Pogba says, you know what? Six months ago before COVID, I, I wanted to leave and you know that. After COVID, we've done well. We've got Champions League football. I'm starting to change my mind. You're going to buy a top-class player. You're going to bring better players in. I'm thinking we can fight for the Champions League and we can fight for the title. You've not done that. The club has gone and done what it's done every year I've been here, which is not actually back the manager in the club properly to win titles. I'm not signing a new contract. I'm not signing a new contract. I'm going to see out this year and then I've got one year left and then, you know, I, 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 we'll see where we are, but I'm not signing a new contract. Um, and actually, if you want to swap me with Juventus for Dybala, I would take that deal. Now, look, Pogba could say that in a totally not anti-United way. He could just look at it like some of you would look at it and go, you know what? If you'd done the things I thought you were going to do, I'll sign the contract. But I'm not just signing the contract. It's very clear to me that Paul Pogba's not all about signing a contract for the money. I think Paul Pogba's changed his mind because the team has changed. I think if you'd asked Pogba in January, do you want to sign a new contract or do you want to go to Real Madrid? He'd be like, I've already packed my suitcase. But if you ask him now, I think he's like, I've unpacked the suitcase. Let's have a look at the contract. But if you ask him in a couple of weeks when we're not buying anybody of note, he might go, I've packed my suitcase again because I, you've got no ambition. I think Pogba will sign the contract if Manchester United matches ambition. And that feeds back into the, the big story that we're always talking about at the moment. So, look, United will not swap Dybala for Pogba. But I guarantee you, Juventus would swap Dybala for Pogba. Um, the interesting... And, and, and look, Pogba played with Perlo. Pogba loves Juventus. You know, you can say Pogba loves United, and he does. And you can say he enjoys playing for Solskjaer, and I'm sure he does. But on the other hand, he might have the same passion to go and do it for Juventus where he was very successful under the manager he used to play with so look United have got to tread carefully and everything seems to feed back, feed, feed, uh, go back to Sancho at the moment but I do actually think signing Sancho has a big impact on whether Pogba signs a new contract I don't think Pogba will sign a new contract if United don't buy Sancho and just go and get you know Grealish I don't think that will be enough because he'll go well there's no first team quality player you've bought there we haven't really got any depth I'm not signing the contract. So I think, you know, it's interesting. I don't think we're going to swap him for Dybala at all. But I, I, I'm not convinced Pogba will sign the new contract if United don't match his ambition. Um, Mark, if the Sancho deal falls through, would you bring up a Meccano, Van der Beek and Marcus Edwards? Your thoughts, says William Jacob. Um, I know Upper Meccano played well last night. I know United have had an interest in him in the past. But again, he has signed a new contract at RB Leipzig and people seem to forget these things. He's just signed a new contract at RB Leipzig, literally in the last couple of weeks. The only club he was going to go to was Bayern Munich. They would want 60, 70 million quid. We're not going to get up a Meccano. So that's it. End of. Chilwell rumours, says Anish. Well, the Daily Mirror are talking about United being in for Ben Chilwell. I mean, look, no, no. Because Ben Chilwell will be too much money for Manchester United. Manchester United don't want a first choice left back. Manchester United would like a backup left back who's left-footed, and I don't think they're even going to get that. So Ben Chilwell's story is a load of crap. And I've said this before, we are going to get a lot through this summer. Manchester United are going to get linked to so many players. It doesn't mean we're in for them. It's all about, sometimes it's just about using the name. And it is frustrating for fans, and it must be very frustrating for the club as well. But we're not in for Ben Chilwell. One story that Flex reacted to last night was the Andreas Pereira story. Apparently he's frustrated at the lack of opportunities he's been getting. Um, I actually applaud Andreas Pereira if he's looking to get a move out of United. I didn't think he would go this summer, but to me, look, and I did the videos, I, I thought Andreas Pereira, you know, I used to talk about him all the time, three or four years ago. When he went on loan to Spain, I thought he did well on his first loan. The Valencia loan wasn't that great, but I genuinely thought that the, the loan to Valencia was the bad move. That's where he should have gone on loan to the Premier League, because... He's never played enough Premier League football for me and now he's approaching his mid-twenties. 
I don't know what Andreas Pereira is. Uh, as of today, I don't know what he is. I've said this so many times. I don't know whether he's a championship player, a League One player, a mid-table Premier League player, you know, a Spanish League player. I don't know what he is. I, I think I know what Lingard is. I think he's a mid-table first teamer in the Premier League. Um, but I don't know what Pereira is. Um, and I, But what I would say about Pereira is I don't think he's ever going to be the player I thought he was. I thought he had the potential. I just think he messed up going on loan to Valencia. I think the first loan to Granada was a good one and then he should have gone on loan to the Premier League. And I know Mourinho wasn't happy with it at the time. So I think Pereira's mismanaged his own career in relation to a Premier League career. He's going to have to go and do it abroad. Um, but look, if he wants to get a move and he can get a move, I applaud him for that. Because to me, and hope, and probably to him, it's very clear that he's not Manchester United quality. He's not, you know, if he's frustrated at the lack of first team opportunities, well, to be honest with you, I think Oli gave him more than enough opportunity until Bruno came in and he just didn't take it. I don't think he's even good enough off the bench. If we can remove that player from the club, I, I think it would be a good thing. It'd be a sad thing, but a good thing. I thought he could have been so much better, but it doesn't always work out. You can't predict it, can you? You know, we've had so many young players over the year that you think years that you think is going to be fantastic, and, and, and some of them, a lot of them just don't make it. So I'd be very pleased if Pereira is going to do that. I personally think Jesse Lingard should do it as well. I think that's the path you should take. If Pereira gets the move, he's getting the move because he wants to get the move, because he wants to play first team football. That's exactly what I think Jesse should do. You know, I think it should be about them chasing their own careers. So if Pereira goes, that's that's another player out of the squad. That's another spot freed up for a young player or another signing. Um, and Pereira ultimately has got no future at United. So I think it's a good thing. Um, it's a sad thing, but it's a good thing. Are you still confident of the deal, says Gabe? Yeah, nothing. nothing's changed for me, really. Um, I think the, the only thing that would uh, change for me would be if we uh, if we saw um, if we saw um, look, if, I think if Jaden Sancho came out and said he was staying at Dortmund next season that would be it I do because it wouldn't 100% be it. it of course that can change I said wan did it last year but at this stage in the negotiations wan said he was staying at Crystal Palace around April time United weren't even negotiating with them at that point. If Jadon Sancho comes out now and says, I'm staying at Dortmund, that's in the midst of negotiations and that would be a hammer blow. Um, I, say, I, I actually think, if you know what, to be honest with you, if a Simon Stone or a Simon Peach or a James Cooper, if they came out and said the deal's definitely off, it's not going to happen, I would probably believe that. If Romano came out and said it, if Christian Falk came out and said it, if they come out and say it, then you know you can't you can't bang your head against the brick wall. I would really start to be concerned, but they're not saying it at the moment. Um, and you know what? I think there's a very interesting story to be told about this transfer. Um, whatever happens, because there is no question, and I said it last night, and I've said it before, there is no question that this deal was very close just over a week ago and what's gone on in the last week I don't know there is rumours that Woodward went back in and tried to renegotiate a deal that had been done um, some people say that didn't happen what actually happened is the terms were done with the player the structure of the deal was done over three years but United would just kept moaning about how much they had to pay on the first down payment I think Dortmund wanted 90 United wanted to play 70 um, so, you, you know I, I don't know what the truth of it is but definitely in the last week there's been a falling out between United and Dortmund um, and it'd be interesting to know what that is. Surprised we aren't looking at Ben White, going to be a rival soon enough also Leeds really want him, says Gareth Harwood and um, when is Oli's pre-match presser says Mo Ali. Tomorrow, I mean, so it's a funny one with his press conference for Ali Gunnar Solskjaer because it's, uh, it's tomorrow at 6 o'clock, which to me, it seems a little bit late. It feels like it should be this morning or maybe this afternoon or maybe tomorrow morning. But apparently it's at six o'clock tomorrow night, his press conference, which just 24 hours before the game just seems a little bit, mm, a little bit soon. But I will be doing my uh, uh, United versus uh, Sevilla preview later on this afternoon. Um, hopefully we've got James Cooper on at lunchtime. Like I say, that's going to be very interesting of Sky Sports to see what he's got to say on United transfer activity. I think we've messed this one up again. I think Ed Woodward job really needs looking at because he's messed so many deals up. He's a banker, says Sean T Turner, with a B, not a W. Um, 
Navil says that the Dortmund header said that he's uh, say, staying in so Sancho won't force a move. Must be a difficult situation for Jaden Sancho, you know. You're on the verge of what you think is the deal that you want to happen. And then that club that you want to go to, for some reason, is messing it up. And uh, we botched the Bruno deal and got a lucky second bite because of results and injury. We won't get it with Sancho. I have little faith in our transfer when uh, uh, activities is Brian Kelly. Well, that, that's a very true point as well, that we... Um, we did have a very good uh, opportunity to get Bruno last year, and we, you know, he was so close to going to Spurs. Bruno Fernandez was nearly a Spurs player. Pochettino would still be in a job, and Spurs would be in the top four if they'd got that deal done. United messed up Bruno Fernandez last summer, and they did get lucky to get a second bite. So let's not act like United are suddenly the kings of the walk in relation to transfers. We've messed up a lot of things over the last few years, and that's why, to me, this Sancho deal is so symbolic. One, because you're buying a player that's fantastic when you've just finished third and it shows ambition. But two, it's the symbolic signing to say we've we've learned from our mistakes of the past. And if they mess this up, they're the same prats that we've always had over the last six years. So let's see what happens. Apart from an informed Martial Bruno, maybe a fit Pogba, we don't have any player who'd walk into the top four, not even speaking about depth, says Sagnik. And um, the rate at which we are doing our negotiations can only think of one song. Wake me up when September ends. Wake me up when... I uh, know, oh I can't even sing it. I'm rubbish. I'm bloody rubbish. Uh, anyway, look, I have... Uh, I've got to just do something here. Let me, uh, let me just show you. But um, don't all jump at once because I haven't put the right um, invite code in the video description so i'm just going to give you a run of how it works and then uh, don't but don't go you won't get on it straight away so let me show you how this works so this is our discord you can see the transfer chat up and going there i've just said hello so you can see it at the bottom discord it looks a little bit confusing but the link is in the video description the invite link in there won't work at the moment i'll put one in there in a minute for you but this is an active 24-7 um, United Stand Discord group. As you can see, people are chatting away about the transfers 24-7 there. And uh, we've got lots of different groups you can do it in. We've got gaming, general chat, match day chat, transfers, media updates. And then down towards the bottom, you've got the call-in queues where you can just drop in a call-in queue if people are there and just chat away about Man United with United Standers from all over the world. Um, so, yeah, lots and lots of... Uh, Lots and lots of activity on that. Make sure you give us a follow. I will drop... Sorry, make sure you get on the Discord link. I will drop it in there for you now. Uh, just give me a minute and I'll put the new link in there because the current one won't work. Um, and also, if you want to get your T-shirts, United Stand T-shirt range, they'll be below the videos on YouTube now. You can just click on them. They're available in different colours and we do ship worldwide. Smash a like on the video and I will speak to you on the next one. Watch out at lunchtime. We've hopefully got James Cooper from Sky on talking about what the latest situation is with United. I'll speak to you in a bit.